Hi, my name is Patrick Miller. I'm Cloud Support Engineer here at AWS. And today I'm going to talk about monitoring Athena queries with CloudWatch. In this presentation, I will cover the below topics a quick overview about Athena metrics, CloudWatch metrics, CloudWatch events, and in the end, I'm going to do a hands on. Athena published the below metrics to Amazon CloudWatch. Query queue time, it is the time the query was in a queue, waiting for research before start the execution. Query planning time, which is the time taken to plan the query, validating the table access and partitions. And gain execution time, this is the time Athena takes reading and processing the data. Service processing time, it's time taken to write results back to S3. Total execution time, this is the amount time Athena took to run the query and process bytes, which is the total amount of data scanned per the ML query. One important thing to understand is how we calculate the total execution time. Total execution time is query queue time plus engine execution time plus service processing time. And we have uh, query planning time, which is a subset of engine execution time. Athena published query metrics to Amazon CloudWatch and we can enable it in the workgroup configuration. For example, on Athena, when you click on the workgroup, you can see all workgroups that you have. And if you select one of them and click on view details, you can see the parameter that enable or disable Athena to send query metrics to CloudWatch. To check the metrics, we have two options. The first option is on the workgroup configuration. So here we have the metrics. I'm going to select the last three days. And we can see the metrics for my account here for this specific workgroup. Or we can see the detailed metrics on CloudWatch. On CloudWatch, when you click on metrics, you can click on AWS Athena. Here we have the metrics per workgroup or the query state and query type for the entire environment. Here, for example, I can select the, oh, I want only the succeed queries. I want only the DML queries. And then you can select them. Uh, let me choose the last three days. And you can see the metrics here. We can use CloudWatch to receive real-time notifications about the query state. When a query transits between states, Athena publishes an event to CloudWatch events. And for example, we can create rules to invoke AWS Lambda when the query finishes. The Athena states are queued, running, succeed, failed, and canceled. And the event has the below format. On CloudWatch, in rules, we can create a rule. We can select Athena, for example. I'm going to edit this configuration and I'm going to add a configuration because I want only the succeed queries. I'm going to save. And I want to save the event in the CloudWatch log. So I'm going to choose a target CloudWatch log and I'm going to create a log group. For example, test Athena. We need to give a name to the rule. So we're going to give it rule test. Create a rule. If we go to log groups, we have that log group created. Now, if I run queries, for example, I'm going to run a preview on this table. If I go to the that log group, we can see it publish this event. For the query that succeed. If we return and run the preview again, 
and refresh the role group, we can see that it creates a new event on the log for the new query. Now I'm going to show you how you can automate the process of getting metrics for each query. The reason is because when you come to CloudWatch is all metrics here are grouped by time so we don't have the details of uh, the metrics for each query and to do that I create this rule uh, let me edit it and then on this rule what I'm doing I'm taking I filtering by these states so when the query succeed failed or is cancelled when the query is with type DML and when the query is submit using the work group Athena Admin, it's going to submit a lambda function. This is the lambda function that I created, query, query statistics, and it is going to create a CloudWatch log group. Uh, the function, the query statistic function, is this function here. So what I'm doing on this function is for each event submitted, so the event is going to come with this information, all right? So here uh, we have the query execution ID inside of the detail. We have the query execution ID. And what I'm doing with detail query execution ID, I'm submitting a API query to get query execution because the get query execution brings the metrics for each query. So for each query that I submit, I'm going to run this lambda function. I'm going to get the query ID. I'm going to run the get query execution to get the metrics for each query. And then I'm going to save it on S3 in this bucket. All right, so if I check this bucket, there is no data there. And if I submit a query, for example, I'm going to run preview here. All right. Uh, if we go to this log group, AWS event such dinner. Event Satina. Uh, we can see this is the last event that was submitted. So as explained before, this is the format, right? Uh, and then on S3 path, it creates this file. And on my quick site, I'm going to refresh. It is going to show the metrics for that query. So this is the query IG. This is was the query that we submit, right? Limit 10. And now we can see the Athena metrics, for example, the query queue, the execution time, the service processing time, uh, the query planning and the engine execution time. All right. Then here I show uh, the amount of data scanned by each query execution ID and the total tile time for each query uh, for each query. So if I submit a new query now, let's change here to 20. Just to differentiate. Alright, now if you will refresh the quick site again. We can see now that it has two queries, one with 10, one with 20, and now I can compare both of queries. So because I changed uh, 10 for 20, the filter, the second query is going to much more data, of course. All right. The time is pretty the same. Our metric is pretty the same.
uh, if I run something like without the limit we can compare out three queries then it's going to take some seconds to to read all data all right so if I refresh my dashboard again now we have three queries here we can see that one of them scan much much more data all right the time is different as well and if we check it s3 we have three files on the s3 all right thank you for watching and have a good day